In this module, we'll define and apply expected goals or XG as a way to predict wins for a team. We're going to use a sample of data from the National Women's Soccer League as the example dataset. We'll cover four main topics in this module. First, we'll define what is expected goals. Second, we'll explore the correlation between expected goals and goals, and then expected goals and wins. Third, we'll walk through an approach to predictive modeling called logistic regression, which is where you build predictive models for binary outcomes such as win or lose a game. And lastly, we'll demonstrate how to apply the model. XG is a statistical metric used to estimate the degree to which a team or player is expected to score. According to James Tippett, author of The Expected Goals Philosophy, put simply, XG tells us the quantity and quality of chances that each team creates from a match. WhoScored.com is a website dedicated to providing in-depth soccer analysis and statistics. We really like the way they explain expected goals, so we thought that it'd be good to have them weigh in. It's an attempt to determine how dangerous a shot on goal is, assigning it a value. A team's total XG for a game will be the total value of all of their shots added together. Now, the reason we need to determine this is because not all shots on goal are equal in terms of the danger they pose. So the traditional shot on target metric doesn't necessarily tell the whole story of a game. For example, you could watch two different games that see a team register nine shots on target in each, but team A took all of their shots from 50 yards, dropping them easily into the goalkeeper's arms. Whereas team B took all of their shots from inside the box forcing the goalkeeper into a heroic display to keep them all out. Okay, that's an extreme example, but from a shots on target perspective, those teams attacking threats look equal. But clearly, one threat is far greater than the other, and that is where XG steps in. The XG value of a shot will take into account plenty of things, but most notably, how close it is to the goal, the angle to the goal, whether the shot was taken with the strong foot, the weak foot, or the head, and much more. You can see here the seasonal averages for each team in the NWSL over the past four seasons. So, the Portland Thorns on average, across these four seasons, are expected to score 1.75 goals per game, according to their XG. For the NWSL data, XG is pre-calculated, so you don't need to calculate it yourself. As a standard part of our predictive modeling, we explore the strength of the correlation between predictor variables and the outcome they are trying to predict. For example, if you want to create a simple predictive model to predict wins for a team using their XG number, you'll first want to test the nature of the correlation. Now keep in mind there are literally thousands of random events, for example passes, positional plays, player movement and so on, that happen during a single soccer game. So trying to get the perfect predictive model based on everything that is happening is near impossible. But before we get too far, we want to validate that there is a correlation between XG and a team winning a game. An easy way to do this is to plot a scatter plot between the number of goals a team scores and their XG. If there's a strong, positive correlation between these two variables, then we should be able to assume that the more goals a team scores, the higher their XG. What we're looking for here is a directional correlation that shows more goals correlates to a higher XG. Now, you should never just go on a single plot that looks like a decent relationship between two variables. Never. So, as a second step, we used the Corel function to test the correlation between the two variables. The result was about a 58% correlation between XG and goals. Not great, but not awful either. So, with what appears to be a positive correlation between XG and goals and a 58% correlation, how might we apply this to building a predictive model and then apply this to wins? According to Enrique Doal, author of Predictive Methods for Football and Betting Markets, goal difference is one of the strongest predictors of winning in football. He also lauds the use of difference in XG as a predictor. So we're going to take this same approach and apply it to our NWSL dataset. XG difference is the difference between the XG for two teams that are playing one another. For example, you can see here 10 sample NWSL matches. From left to right, you see the home team, away team, XG of the home team, XG of the away team, and then the difference between the two. For match number one, the XG difference is 0 
Our theory is that you can take the XG difference and create probabilistic bands that can then give you a percentage prediction for wins, draws, and losses. In short, the greater the XG difference between two teams, the more likely it is that the higher of the two will win. What we're building is called a classification model because we're modeling a win or a loss. This binary classification model can be done in a number of ways, but a good place to start is to use a logistic regression model. Our logistic regression model will use the XG difference to build the prediction, which we can then translate into a range of win probabilities. Our goal will then be to apply those win probabilities such that we have a higher or lower confidence on our predictions, depending on the XG difference. The raw data we sourced from FBREF was not ideally structured for training, testing, and building a logistic regression model, so we needed to transform the data to get it in a structure that could be used for training and modeling. After we train and build the model, the results are promising. Using the sample data set, we found the level of significance of the model is 0.937 using XG difference and wins. This is highly significant. For example, if a team creates one more expected goal than its opponent, its chance of winning increases dramatically. When we plot the results of the logistic regression model, we get the following graph. On the bottom, you see XG difference, which represents the number of better quality chances one team creates compared to their opponent. Now notice the curve moving upward across the chart. When teams create about the same number of chances, so their XG difference is around zero, their odds of winning are basically a coin flip. The dots represent the matches. The gray ones are where the team didn't win and the red ones are where they did. You can see that as the XG advantage grows, the red dots dominate the top of the chart and are more prevalent beyond the zero XG mark. It's sometimes easy to get lost in the charts, but here's a simple chart that puts the model that we built into a more practical view. It represents the spectrum of win probabilities by XG difference built using the classification model. The way you can interpret this chart is as follows. First, when teams underperform in XG by 1.0, they only have about a one in five chance of winning. Second, when XG difference is zero, they still only win about 41% of the time, since draws are common. Third, when the XG difference is at 1, the win probability jumps to about 64%. And lastly, when the XG difference is at 2 or above, the win probability is above 80%. This shows that XG difference is not just directional, but highly predictive. Here you can see 10 sample matches from the NWSL dataset and using the XG statistics for the home and away teams, we've calculated the win and draw probabilities for each team. Now imagine these probabilities updated on a daily basis for all fixtures in the league. It's pretty powerful stuff. This was the fifth module in our data storytelling and AI course, where we're exploring different ways to leverage AI in your data stories in this module, we explored using AI to build a classification model. The model predicts whether a team will win or draw based on their XG statistic. If you want to check out more of our content and courseware, be sure to like and subscribe us here on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, and sign up for free to join our growing global community on datapunk.media.